guys, this is Casey from Casey's Customs, and in this series, I am building a hot rod truck for under a thousand dollars. I so many in your town. Hey, sitting like a boss, bring the workers out. Press on the exhaust, we be scurrying now. No, we not the same. What you talking about? Got me all up in your mentions, must have heard around. How that sound? Yeah, that sound. Today, we're going to focus on cutting up this radiator support. I need to cut as much of it as I can without cutting anything important or obviously the radiator. So it's kind of tricky. Let me show you what I'm talking about. 346 minutes later. Got these little guys mounted, and then this will go right shot. Move that wiring out of the way, there we go. And then I'm gonna have a plate from here down, and this will bolt on. If any of this ever needs to come off, a couple bolts just lift right out. Hopefully it never has to come off, but who knows? You never know how these things go. A thousand miles down the road, something might happen. Let me show you there too. Perfect. I just need to measure and see how long my plate needs to be. Check it out. Got the mounts made. This is way overbuilt. I made it out of like three eighths inch plate, which I just I just had it around. But I mean that's that's thicker than the frame is essentially. <laughs> it's just way overbuilt. Lost 14 inches off each ear, so 28 inches. I mean that that's huge. And we ended up coming back. My mounts originally were right in line with that bolt, and now they mount back there. So I mean. I don't know, four inches, five inches. I really didn't even have to shorten it that much because my fender sticks out way out here, but it's always better to have room up front. You got headlight buckets and trim and, you know, a grill and all that fun shit. So it's real nice to have that open. Another cool thing about throwing the hood up there is it shows you that we've made plenty of clearance for the fenders. So since I'm gonna start on the front end, what I'm going to do is get the fenders on the hood, actually just tack weld them to it so I know my gaps are all good. And then I'll try and move this whole thing over to the chassis and then kind of start fitting stuff up. The last thing you want to do is mount a fender and then try and make your hood fit. You, you want all that shit to fit together. Also, since in this case, I'm going to have to stretch this cowl section. I'm gonna actually end up cutting this all along here and I will take the edge of this cowl and I'll go ahead and put it on the hood as well and tack weld it. That way I know all my gaps are gonna be perfect. So even though I am cutting up the cab in a bunch of different ways, everything will still have a factory fit. I'm gonna start trying to get my fenders clamped to that hood and then I'll just put a little tack weld on it. Nothing crazy, I don't want it welded solid, I just want it tacked for now. And then once I get everything mounted, I can go back and cut those welds off. So let's do all of that I just said. Got it all tacked together. Now it is time to cut the cab. Let's get cutting. Got the cowl cut, and that's probably about where it's gonna be, actually. I'm gonna take this off and weld it to the back of this front end. Absolutely beautiful, check it out. Got the back put on. Got everything ground down after I cut the shit out of my finger, of course. But everything is smooth. I got this over here ready to go too. So now all we gotta do is put the front clip on 
and uh, figure out where my gap's gonna be. I think it's gonna be around six inches, but I don't know. I cannot pick up that motherfucker by itself. It is way too heavy. So I'm gonna have to wait uh, for some help probably tomorrow and I'll throw it up there. The bed, you know, it's giant and awkward, but the whole thing weighs like 50 pounds, 100 pounds, it's no big deal. This is very heavy and very awkward and it's easy to bend and break stuff on the front end, so I can't just be throwing it around very much. So, gonna have to wait for somebody to help me that. But I'm excited, making some moves. So here's a tip for anybody that is doing a chassis swap, you know, an old car or truck on a modern chassis. In my case, I got a 1954 Ford going on a 2000 Lincoln Town Car chassis, but it's the same principle either way. What you want to do whenever you get to mounting stuff to the modern chassis, you would think, oh, I've taken all these measurements. I know where this cab sat on the old frame, so now I just need to make sure that all sits you know, in relation to the same spot on the Lincoln frame, you gotta... In reality, none of that means shit because everything can be off a little bit. They built these old cars on an assembly line with no computers. They're not the most accurate. I've seen, like, on a 50 Chevy, the wheelbase is supposed to be, like, 115. I've seen it as low as 114. <laughs> you know, it's just, like, a full inch off. So it happens. So what you want to do before you mount anything, regardless of what you've measured, you want to make sure your wheels are centered in the wheel well. That is more important than anything else. So before I mount this cab, before I mount that bed, I'm gonna make sure all my wheels are centered in the wheel wells. And if you go through pictures of swaps, uh, a lot of times people don't do that and the wheel well will look funky. You know, it'll just have a wheel in it way too forward or way too back. A lot of people think those people did something wrong. I mean, technically they did because it's off, but in reality, they probably had everything measured where it was supposed to be and perfect and they mounted their cab, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Where the wheel sits is what's important. It's kind of a tip I picked up over the years. I've done it wrong myself as well. You know, and, and it's funny too, because you'll be like, no, it's 32 inches. You know, the cab, the front of the cab is exactly 32 inches from this point. It should be exactly, and you get it on there, and then all of a sudden your wheel is at the, you know, back of your wheel well, and you look like an idiot. So, just a little tip for everybody. So, just a little tip for everybody. I haven't made any mounts on the front end. I just have it kind of held up with paint stir sticks and, you know, two by fours and, and a jack, but everything is perfectly level and everything is spaced exactly where it needs to be. Center of the wheel wells in the front, center of the wheel wells in the back. So everything is good. I did go ahead and mount the bed. I just whipped up some, just a, you know, some quick angle angle iron looking mounts and then drilled holes in them and bolted it so I can unbolt it just in case it's off. And then I just drilled holes through the bed and the cab and squeezed that together. That'll actually be undone. You actually don't want them touching. You want a little bit of a gap, but I got tired of trying to line the bed up and it was falling and then also the cab was falling. So when I bolted that together, that I know nothing can change now. So these two are square to each other no matter what, because they're in the, you know, they're combined essentially. Got the fenders put on. Made clearance back here, made clearance up here. We're good. You can see now, I couldn't really tell before because I was moving stuff, but you can see now how wide this rear end is. It's actually all the way out to the lip. Eventually, whenever I get everything kind of mounted where it needs to be, I'll cut this here and put like a two inch strip in it to widen that fender out a little bit. I might have to do the same in the front or in the front I might just run uh, a different offset wheel because it, it looks badass when you make the rear wider, but the front, there's really no, I mean, there's no great way to make it wider. You can come in here and widen the whole fender, but then it just looks like you have a huge fender. It doesn't really, it doesn't look the same as the rear. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. But next up is to get the front clip mounted and I need to be careful. That always happens. I need to be careful when I'm mounting it because all this stuff is just barely kind of, you know, hanging up. So I don't want to weld something and have everything jump over an inch. Now that I have those two braces in there that's actually taking the weight off of the front end, um, I have those up there. 
And there's actually a little mount um, here where the normal cross brace would go. So all that weight now is held up. I don't need my jack anymore. And what I'm gonna do next, well, I've actually started doing it, is I'm gonna just put some metal in here for now and just screw it in with some self tappers. That'll keep all this tight and not let anything move around. While I have that where I need it, then I can start making mounts up underneath this cowl. You don't think of it because it looks like this is just attached to the hood like it was before, but this is actually still my cowl. This needs to be very strong. So I need to make a bunch of braces in here, but I can't, you know, I can't be kicking around here trying to make braces with everything wanting to move. So I'm gonna throw some, just some scrap sheet metal I have, screw it into it. That'll keep everything strong. And then if just in case something does need change, I can pop those screws out and adjust it. Okay, I think I have everything braced up enough to hold it. Moment of truth. Beautiful. These hang down too low. Even though my fender is lined up, it hangs down more than it should. So I think I'll probably end up trimming that. But front clip is actually on the car with nothing, no jacks or anything like that holding it up. Sweet. That's cool. Thank you guys very much for watching. As you can see, we are definitely moving along very quickly on this. I'm very happy to finally figure out my wheelbase issues. I've stretched fenders and hoods before. They never look great. I think this cow stretch was by far the best option. I posted some pictures of this on Facebook and Instagram, and I didn't even have people notice this. They were, they were asking me where I was going to stretch it. They didn't see it was already cut and stretched. So that's a, that's a huge compliment in my eyes. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and start filling some of this in with sheet metal. I also think this front end might need to come down a little bit. I feel like it's a little high in the front end. I made sure everything was level, but uh, after looking at some pictures, I'm not sure that these hoods are level. I think they actually tilt down a little bit on a stock truck. So I might have to tweak that a little bit. Luckily, with everything being mounted now, there's just a couple of adjustments. It's not the end of the world. But that'll all be on the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good shit they tell you to do at the end of videos, and check out some more of my other videos. Peace! Got me all up in your mansions, must have heard around How that sound, yeah that sound good